Welcome to the Magic of the Cup semi-final edition. Today, I'm joined by Lee Jones, the creator of Jonah Football. He's worked with the best talent from the A-League and MPL in the country. And I'm joined by the colossal six foot six glovesman, Daniel Nizic, who's playing for Sydney United. He's had a career that's taken him to the top levels of UK and Aussie football, but now he's dreaming of a cup fairy tale. Costa from 1-0 FC is cup tied with the Oakley Cannons. We've got a jam-packed episode here on the Magic of the Cup. Yes, guys, welcome back to the Magic of the Cup. It's episode four. We look forward to the semi-finals of the Australia Cup, and I'm joined by two more guests. Firstly, Lee Jones. You may know him as Jonah Football. Jonah, over 850,000 followers and subscribers on all your socials. You know you got that many? We got 1.2. <laughs> Wait, what, what are you adding here? What, Bebo, what are you yeah, adding to this? Yeah, Bebo, my, MySpace, MySpace. I must have got my stats wrong, but yeah. it, is, it is a massive audience nonetheless. Over 250K now on YouTube as well. Coaching clinics. I know you were in the US earlier this year. You got yes. another camp coming up in Sydney now? Yes, coming up, yeah. Massive, mate. Love what you're doing. Big fan of what you're doing, and I'm um, buzzing to have you on the show today to talk this mix of MPL and A-League players. We have one right across from you, a colossal man himself, Daniel Nizic, and what a, what a I guess, a career he's already had. 27, baby years when we're talking goalkeepers, really, but you've already gone, played overseas for so long. Now you're back, and you enjoying life at Adenza? Yeah, I love it there, man. Yeah, it's good. It's good. It's good back to be in uh, the creation roots. It's the cr nice. Exactly right. Yeah, it yeah. must feel like home, and you guys are going on an incredible run in this tournament, but for the people that might not know your story, as much you grew up playing football in sydney but you spent many many years overseas where did that football journey take you in the uk yeah so i i moved when i was uh i think it was about 15 just turned 16 or maybe 16 i went to portsmouth spent a year there then um about six years at uh burnley a few mm -hmm. loan spells crew and uh a few places and then um and I went to uh, Morecambe for two years. Morecambe, the Shrimps. Fun, yeah. Good yeah. clubs. Good clubs. Yeah. Man. Good clubs. And you, I mean, you know a thing or two about Premier League Academy and into Wrexham as well. So both of you guys, I guess, have that knowledge over there where cup football is huge. And a lot of your opportunities yeah. came in yeah. the cups, if my stats serve me yep. correctly. Now here, I think the cup is really growing year to year. We talk about it here on the show all the time. The Australia Cup this year played entirely before the A-League. And it feels like there's a different buzz about it now. We've got two MPL teams in the semifinals. So I do want to talk about that for you, though. You have so much experience now coaching A-League players and MPL players. Do you notice a big difference in the quality between the two? Or do you find that these there are a lot of MPL players out there that are a bit untapped and should be given more opportunities like this cup? One million percent, yeah. What I What is the difference, if there is one? I would say that the biggest difference is just the environment that, that right. these guys are in. I reckon if you were to put them in a really good environment where you know it's it's full time football, they mm -hmm. they would thrive on it. Um, and I don't think there's that much of a difference, as you can see. You know, some of the top clubs in MPL one mm -hmm. in the semi final. I hope I hope one of those th th those clubs make it to the final. I really yeah. do because it's just a good advocate for the MPL clubs as well. You right. know, and I see it firsthand with a lot of players that, that we coach in in Sydney is. I just feel like there's not that much opportunity for them. Right. You know, if you think about it, there's only 12 professional clubs in the A-League. Yeah. So you see it all the time, you know, the UK, you give someone a, a little bit of a chance and they take it with both hands, you know. I feel like some of these players need a, a chance yeah, and, and they'll take it, you know. And that chance sometimes might be dropping down. In the first episode, we had Paolo Retre on and he spoke about when he was at Melbourne Victory, I believe he was at the time, before he went to City, he dropped down, played for Bentley Greens, and that's when he really made his name because he played senior football. He played the whole season. Do you feel a bit like that's happening to you now, Getting being able to play week in, week out at Sydney United? Massive name for you now in the Cup. Has that helped your career? 100%. I think it's just for like young people as well. The most important thing is just playing games. That's that's yeah. that's where you get your best. Yeah. Like, you know, you're getting better, you're understanding the game yeah. and all that kind of stuff, the experience. That's so much better than, say, training and not playing. You know, mm. maybe you're at a bigger club, yeah. but... Just going and playing, I think that's that's your best development. And I, I'm thoroughly enjoying just playing games. It's massive. I mean, you are enjoying it. It looks like you're enjoying it. Yeah. I'd be enjoying it too if I was keeping clean <laughs> sheets left, right and centre in a semi-final. There's an award that gets given out. I don't know how much you know about it, but I, I've seen, I've heard some rumours going around. The Michael Cockerell Medal is an award given every year for a player outside the A-League clubs that is the MVP of the Australia Cup. And a lot of people are calling for you to be one of the biggest candidates of that one because <laughs> it's been an incredible run. You guys now have travelled and... Talk to me a little bit about this before. We're going to look at your game against Peninsula soon, but even yep. before that, knocking out Western United. Talk yeah, to me that, about it. That was a special day. Um, yeah, the boys like we just we, like we just came to the game, nothing to lose. You know, we thought we could, uh, you know, make an upset, and look, we did. We worked hard, and uh, the boys just stuck together, and um, yeah, we got the win, and and a good way to do it as well. Going to extra time, penalty yeah. shootouts, winning in pens, and then all the fans running on, and. Yeah. Yeah, it was unbelievable, unbelievable for, day. For you, with that moment when it goes to penalty shootouts as a goalkeeper, is there that pressure, or is the, the pressure? Nah, there's no the pressure. There's no pressure now because it's like, 
we we can't make a mistake now. If we we can be only hero, yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah. If if they score, they score. If we save, you know, we can be a hero. Yeah. And yeah, and I'm, you know, I, you know, I'll say something funny enough. Like the morning of the game, I um I went on YouTube and I thought, you know what, I'll just watch some of the highlights to see if they got any highlights. Maybe maybe a penalty or something right. like that. Love that. Anyway, there was a week before they had played some MPL team down in Melbourne. Okay. So Lustica. You know, I watched he uh, he had scored a pen yeah. going down that way that you know I, I went and saved. So as soon as he lined up, <laughs> I thought, you know what, he scored. He probably didn't think I was going to watch it. Yeah. And then so yeah, lucky I watched YouTube that morning. <laughs> no way. <laughs> YouTube helping the guy. It's probably harder to find Sydney United highlights, I reckon, if the, the if Jamie Young was trying to find the highlights of your boys because they dispatched those penalties very well as well. Gonzalez hit that last one, and then you had to travel. Yeah. Away to Peninsula. Yeah. We had Olan Tekkers on the show last time in, in episode three. A good friend of yours as well, Lee Jones. I saw What's you it? working on his Tekkers a little bit last yeah, week. Yeah, needs it. Needs it, doesn't he? <laughs> uh, he was talking about he, he, plenty of his mates playing for Spirit. They had to travel up there and play. And they made the mistake of traveling on the day of the game. And I guess their preparation was a little bit off. And you know a thing or two about Spirit. They're a good side, right? They yeah. fell up there in Peninsula. You guys went there and did the job. Did you travel day of the game? Yeah, no, we traveled the night before, there the day go. before. The big spent one. the day up there. Um, there you, go. you know, got to hang out a little bit, relax, and then uh, wake up, obviously, fresh and straight to the game, which was, I think, definitely better than going on the day. And yeah. Did you get to stay after the game too? Nah, no. Nah, oh, nah, you nah, didn't. Nah, but we, uh, we went back to uh, a restaurant after the game, had some to eat, a couple of drinks, yeah. and then went back to the airport, and then flight got delayed a few hours <laughs> As all so we're just chilling there. Yeah. <laughs> just on that though you know like that whole buzz of traveling you know i've i played in cup matches in mm. england and i've obviously played for the coa and played in the australia cup for the coa but if you get to travel you're sort of in an environment as a professional footballer there so you sort of get that buzz for it you get that feel for it and go back to what i said before yeah. about you put players in that environment it's just I feel like your mindset is completely different, you know, because yeah. most players in NPL are all they're all people are working, you know, yeah. they their full time job is not football, but you know, the likes of you guys travelling, your mindset's gotta be different towards that game show. A hundred percent, hundred percent. Like, you know, even you know, the travelling, you know, you can see the boys that all switched on, like eating the right things, doing the right things, That's you know, I mean, no yeah, one was yeah. going out the night before, yeah. you know, everyone was in bed <laughs> by nine thirty. Um, you know, so no, it was definitely like you could see we were sweet like, you know, that sort of gets that switched on and we were you mm. know, even the whole week before training you know like compared to like not that we never take MPL serious but you know when you know that show a cup you know yeah. we know we can do something yeah. that like the boys a whole week switched on training hard and you know you could see the whole like the men mental they were on it you know yeah. and I um, mean we got the win so it's a huge achievement it's a testimony to the MPL because you guys had a bit of a shaky start to the season didn't it make the finals and we saw the MPL finals recently there's so much quality there so if Sydney United didn't make the finals this year, but still mm. are doing this on a national scale. It shows how much quality, not just United, but all the other clubs do have at that level. And for you, you had a bit of a cup run with Hakoa. You scored in the round of 32. Yeah. And like I said, uh, it's just strange that your mindset and your preparation towards cup games. I remember at Hakoa, we had um, Melbourne victory in the quarterfinals. And just the buzz around the place yeah. and the way we trained that week was almost as if we were pros. Yeah. And like, again, going back to what I said, if you change the environment here, things can really, really improve. And yeah. and, and we did really, really well. Yeah, you did. But I just remember, it was it's just something special. There's nothing yeah. that can yeah. beat a good cup run. I think it's just, it's so unique. And yeah. the more that Australia can offer that, the better. Like, a, we should try and create more cups, yeah. you know, Definitely. for sure. Well, we say, we, say it, we say it time and time again on the show, we actually have more clubs participating in the Australia Cup than they do in the FA Cup in England. Yeah, can you believe right. it? There's no over way. 740 clubs that take part in this cup, and you're in the final four. We'll take it. So <laughs> we, 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 you've, already, you've already done so well. We'll get to there in a second. Let's look back at the quarterfinals because four cracking games, and the first one to kick it off, you guys played on a standalone. You're loving your weekend games. Yep. Peninsula took on Sydney United, and it was a 1-0 win, probably the best result there is for a goalkeeper. Yeah, 100%. Clean sheet. Right. Can't, you can't lose if you clean don't concede. Sheet bonus. Okay, <laughs> right. Clean sheet bonus. Clean sheet bonus. Thank we you don't very get, much. We're not getting paid oh for this, God. man. Yeah, exactly. They're just doing, doing it for the love. Oh God. Do it for the love. There was a controversial moment just before the goal. Now, firstly, Daniel made two cracking saves in the first seven minutes. T take a look at some of the highlights if you haven't seen it already. One-on-one -on -one after three minutes, you had to be called into it. Yep. Love Samir has had a great tournament up until that point. He's probably still having nightmares of you. Um, <laughs> but Jonah, I wanted to get your opinion on a, on a controversial moment. I went, I went and asked Daniel, but look at this. This was just before Sydney and I took the lead. There was a cheeky handball appeal here in the box. Have a look at it again. 
There's a good chance. There's a bit of a hand from the centre half there. Looks like it. Your opinion? Penalty or is that just too close to call it? Let's just say hope VAR's not in there. Yeah. In this. <laughs> <laughs> That's Was a that, bit of a... That wasn't a pen, though. It wasn't given, right? Daniel <laughs> swallowed it up, rolled it out. Less than a minute later, an absolute rocket from the same player, right? Frago Giannis, let's have a look at this goal that he scored. <laughs> Check out some of the techers on that, Jonah. Some techers you'd be proud of. Oh, and that's the same player that down the other end that struck his hand in the box. And that's that's the beauty of football. Strike or Jackson, that one. Let's just, yeah, let's just say on the, on the bus home, he was uh, washed out probably about a thousand times. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's, he was he's just keeping here. It. Yeah, he was loving it. That's some strike. I think oh, it's tough, isn't it? It's yeah. so tough for them yeah. defenders. Like, you're asking them to try and defend like this. Yeah, or yeah. yeah. It's just... It's yeah, if you have a look, like when, when he hits it, he's, it's not even a metre. Like yeah, really yeah, from yeah, he's got no time. So what can you do? Yeah, yeah what can you do? You know, it's true that that went down as my tech of the match there for you to test yeah, out. I love that. Um, I know you do love your tecker there. Now, Love Samira had more nightmares because in the second half, it was one on one with you again. Yep. You came out, you got big. That's been something we've seen a lot in this tournament. One on ones, you feel pretty confident in those. Eh? Yeah, I, mean, I just I like I like my one on ones. I just yeah. cause I, I'm a big guy, six six. So just I guess if I can stay big and get close to them, then you know makes it a bit more difficult for them. And yeah. And yes, I enjoy it. Well, you know what? I, I usually recommend footballers to stay out of YouTube comments and Twitter comments and all the rest. But I had to find <laughs> on the highlights of that game, there was this nice YouTube comment that I wanted to grab out. This was on the highlights of Sydney United against Peninsula. And it was Sydney United 58 goalkeeper once again stepping up on the big stage. I reckon an A-League side should look to sign him on a pro deal. He's one of the best NPL goalkeepers I've seen from casually watching this season in Queensland, New South Wales and Victoria. Quite tall and solid too. Has a gorgeous, lengthy and consistent goal kick. <laughs> Bravo. This is a YouTube <laughs> comment for you. So there's plenty of love Sheesh. for you, Daniel. Cheers, mate. And uh, keep those going. We need more of that, yeah, right? Less of the sure. hate on social. That's that's more oh of the comments God. that we need. Um, but yeah, the scenes after the match was huge. A few fans travelled up with you guys. Yeah, we had a few fa fans travel up. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're unbelievable. They're home and away. They're there. Um, and we had a few of the Gold Coast Knights and, um, right. and the other uh, Brisbane Creation team come down. So they um they backed us and honestly helped us get the uh, yeah. get over the line. That's Pretty class. Nice. How good, how good. Great to see Sydney United were the first team through to the semi finals. Then we had MacArthur FC, Dwight York coaching them. Jonah, big name, Yorkie. Um knows how to have a good time too, <laughs> if 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 the stories are are true. But they took on Wellington. I copped a bit of stick last week on the show because I, I didn't mean it in this way, but I said to anyone in the MacArthur region I encouraged them to go watch the game at Campbelltown Stadium. I said, see what this MacArthur side do to Wellington. I didn't mean it in that way, like they were going to smash Wellington, but I had a few Kiwi fans hit me up in the comments. Anyway, they did beat Wellington quite comfortably, so there you go. Um, <laughs> the Bulls looked great in the first half. It was good to see Danny De Silva, Arzani, Toure, Davila all on the park together. Uh, very well taken finish. There was my tech of the mattress from Al Hassan Toure. But goalkeeper... Philip Curto was huge as well for MacArthur, making a few yep, big definitely, saves. Definitely, Have you worked with him before? Have you? Nah, I've no, I've never worked with him. No. He was. He's another another colossal man that's really making a name for himself so far in Australian football. It was a terrible error from Tim Payne, the substitute, to gift Lockie Rose the second goal there, but MacArthur win two 0 When you were looking at the draw, Daniel, I mean, you guys watched the draw together? Yeah, no, no, we're all at home. You're all at home. Yeah, on WhatsApp was going crazy. WhatsApp was going <laughs> yeah, crazy. Yeah. Were there any Were there any preferences or anyone you wanted to avoid at this point? Or no, I just feel like you know where we we back ourselves. We're pretty confident to go up against anyone. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think we've proved it, and you know, and uh, we were happy with anyone. Yeah. So, nah, but we're buzzing with Brisbane when we got them, and we're ready to go. P perfect one to take on an A-League team at home. Um, but MacArthur do look very, very strong at the yeah, moment. They've got some great they're players. Strong. So managed to avoid them. Still, you've you got to take on this Brisbane side. They were taking on Adelaide United, the most successful team in the Australia Cup history. It's a great goal from Jay O'Shea to open the scoring. And, and for the tech here, I wanted to come to you. I think I've got this one on the iPad for you, Jonah. I wanted, I wanted you to have a look at some of the tech in this game because Charlie Austin. Oh. We, we know Big Bad Charlie, don't we? He's come down to Australian football. He's been given an opportunity to make a name for himself in the cup. And so far, he scored his first goal for Brisbane in this game. Thoughts on these type of coups for A-League clubs to get former Premier League players down? Great. It's big for the game, isn't it? It's amazing. When I first came to Australia, Del Piero was the main right. man. And the, the buzz around the, the league was great. Mm. So I think the more you, we were talking about this off air, the more you know big names you can get here and attract better players. It's going to be exciting for the game in Australia, you know. Who? I love Charlie Austin. He's a good character. He's well. a good character yeah. off the park as yeah. well, doesn't he? I, um, when I was at Burnley, I was with him for four years there. Really? 
Yeah, so I'm looking forward to playing up against him. He's a good guy. Wow. On and off the pitch, he's quality. There Should have got go. him on the podcast. Sub me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that would that would be a good one. Maybe maybe for our grand final, we'll see how he goes in this game. There was some tech there from Jay O'Shea. Good hit from outside the box. I love checking. You, you're my head of technique here. Yeah, go on. So, firstly, it was great dropping deep Harry Kane style. Charlie Austin started the play. Crafty winger here. Love it. And then this finish. He's a touch and finish from the captain O'Shea. What are you rating it? I go it. I go eight out of ten. Eight think, out of ten. I think to always score outside the box, it takes special technique. You know, yeah. s- especially against good goalkeepers. Yeah. But going back to you, Daniel, I think whenever I look back to any success I've had in football, the goalkeeper was always unbelievable. Yeah. I think it's such a difficult position to play in football. Um, and I suppose it's a testament to you and, and Sydney United really on how well you're doing because who would wa- I wouldn't want to be a goalkeeper. It's such a, <laughs> such a tough <laughs> position. Well, to you got to be you know? a little bit crazy, don't you? The modern yeah, keeper 100%. as well, though. The modern keeper yeah, as well. Yeah, you know, it's, yeah. it's so key. You, you got to be good with your feet. Yeah. And I suppose you know you're probably going to be needed in, in the semi final as well. So. Yeah. Definitely. It's a big, big position yeah. to play. Definitely. And I'm sure Charlie Austin will get free and get a few chances. So <laughs> yep. let's see. It'll be a, a nice familiar yeah. face for you. Hopefully not too good. Nah. Uh, Joe Gauchi was huge in this game as well for Adelaide. Not good enough, though, in the end. But this is a controversial decision here, Jonah. Red card challenge for Ibasuki? No. I think, like, tackling is going to go away from the game. Right. Right. I have a very strong opinion on that. Okay. For example, the Van Dyke one on the right. weekend. Yep. A lot of people saying that's a red card. I mean, he's... he's it's stud- high. It is high. His but. stud was high... He's got even one leg though. Okay, so one leg stud up shouldn't be a red card in your opinion, Jeremy. I think that I think like that's that's where football's changed a lot, hasn't it? Okay, you go because one leg back in the day, yeah, is is it's great. Fun. Two yeah. legs back in the day, red card. Yeah, yeah. But I feel like tackling is slowly going out of the game now. Right, right. I really do. Maybe if you go ridiculously high above yeah. knee, it's yeah. a bit questionable. But yeah. it's there to be won 50 50. Yeah. I feel like if we keep giving stuff like a red mm. card. Tackling's going to fizzle out of the game, for sure. That's true. You know what else? Goalkeeper, protected species in the game, aren't oh, they? Hundred <laughs> <laughs> <100%, laughs> percent. I was just about to say, you goalkeepers get away with murder. Yeah, so. they do. Nah, nah, they nah. do. But uh, look, that was a big moment for Adelaide. Once Ibasuki was off the park, <coughs> it was always going to be hard for them to come yep. back. He, of course, scored their only goal of the day. And Adelaide crash out, meaning we got four teams... None of them have won this competition before because everyone thought Sydney FC were going to go down and do a job against Oakley Cannons. They didn't do that. Oakley, well-deserved winners on the day. Wade Decker opened the scoring. Um, It was fantastic lead-up play there as well from the number 10 in midfield. And then Chris Lucas, don't know how much he knew about the second goal, but put them two up. Sydney did pull one back despite their new signings. Max started, Lolly, Caballo, they all featured all these summer signings, winter signings. Couldn't make the impact and they crash out. But for Oakley, speaking of keepers, did you hear the keeper saga that happened at Oakley? Yeah, I saw it. Apparently, when was it? 14 year old? 14 year old on the bench, Jonah. I think eight, no keepers, eight keepers or something was, yeah. was injured. Or, yeah. Oh, crazy. So, Ima Abili was the ninth selection goalkeeper. He's the under 14s goalkeeper ah. and he was called up to be on the bench for this game. They signed Luis Italiano, former Perth and Wellington yep. goalkeeper. They signed him on the day of the game to play. Because they had no goalkeepers. And he came wow. in and did a great he job. He did unbelievable. Considering, like, he literally flew in that day. Yeah. He did, he did unreal. It's he did unreal. Massive achievement yeah. for that club. And a 14-year-old to be on the bench That's in the Australia insane. Cup on TV and everything. And he looked like, and he looked like a baby. He did, oh. didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> I think... I, I think you say something did happen, he had to come on, wow. Can you imagine there was like a red <laughs> card or something? I wonder if he'll be featured again, but it'll be something he'll never forget. Andrew Redmayne, credit to him though. Of course, got Australia to the World Cup. Yeah. Um, he equals the record. It was his sixth quarterfinal appearance. So credit to him, great servant of the game as well. And for that game, to celebrate the culture of Oakley Cannons. Earlier in the tournament, we actually sent Costa, the creative young mind behind 1-0 FC. We sent him down to be cup-tied with Oakley Cannons and here's how it turned out. Thanks, Claude. Hey, everyone. I'm Costa, and I'm here to preview a huge round of 16 clash between Oakley Cannons and Brisbane City. I'm going to go have a chat to some of the staff, players, and even some of the managers as well, and I might even help myself to a nice sort of lucky at the end because that smell is unbelievable. I've been cup tired here at Oakley Cannons. Let's go. I'm here with George, who's been at the club for many, many decades. His father was one of the founders of the club as well. Now, George, we mentioned previously, how long have you been part of this club? Uh, myself going back uh, since uh, 1979. So a long, long time. Yeah, it's been a while. Three generations for my family. Uh, son's here now, under 16. So 
nieces as well in the lower lower divisions. Uh, it's something we've tried to install as a, as a club. I'm here with club president Stan. How long have you been president of Oakley Cunners? Uh, it's been 14 years now. Yeah, we're very egalitarian. There's a lot of different uh, community and cultural groups here. Uh, over 500 juniors, so it's a uh, it's a, a plethora of uh, people here. So we welcome all. But it is good to continue the great culture. Yeah, we've been lucky enough to receive a, a grant from uh, local council and state governments as well for a uh, brand new grandstand facility. It gives us the opportunity to tap into a uh, women's football market as well. It's something that we've been trying to do for a few years. New pavilion, new grandstand. So it's going to be massive for our club. Yeah, what does a night like tonight mean for the club? A huge game, how important is it? Well, I think once you're on the national stage, that's what every player wants. It's, it's a big game for us. I mean, playing week in, week out at NPL level, uh, we do get reasonable crowds, but uh, it doesn't capture the audience all over Australia. So that's great for us. If we can play an A-League team, that's, that's even better. So that's, that's the hope that we uh, do go through and, and do play an A-League team. But uh, like I said, Brisbane City will have something to say about that as well. How important is it for yourself personally? We mentioned breaking into that Oli Roos squad. How important is it for you to also put on a good display here for Oakley as well? Uh, it's always important to put on a good display, especially times like now that are coming up for me. I'm so really looking forward to it. Best of luck for the game. Thank you. Flash, Jordy, how are you feeling heading into your senior debut? Yeah, I'm a bit nervous, but overall just really keen to get out there and see what I can do. Awesome. What position are you playing tonight? Um, I think I'll be in the midfield, maybe left back. Um, we'll see what the coach has for me though. Awesome. Best of luck. Congrats on your senior debut. Thank you very much. Well how important is it to bring these youth players up into the senior program like we're going to see tonight? Uh, look, I think it's important. It gives everyone the opportunity. Um, we're probably a bit of a victim of our own success. We've been in every competition this year um, and hence we're playing games, midweek games at the weekend and uh, it's probably taken its toll on us. I think we've got seven missing. But uh, it is what it is, you know, we'll just face up to the challenge and it gives the opportunity to one or two younger boys, which is great for them. I couldn't contain myself and finally I've ended up here in the canteen. The souvlaki smell is unbelievable. I'm here with Ilias and Maria. Maria, por una echo mia souvlaki meta. Enoite, bebe. Os echo mito calidero souvlaki sti melvuni. Oreo. Pame. Pame oikli. Pame oikli. Papis, just get a chicken souvlaki, thank you. Thank you very much. How good does that look? Unbelievable. Tyson, talk about a game, 5-3, you went to extra time, how are you feeling after the game? Yeah, look, I'm knackered at my age, you don't want to be going to extra time, especially in wet weather and it's a cold, windy night, but it was just a crazy game of Australian Cup football and, um, you know, I think it was a great one for the mutuals tonight and just end to end stuff. Talk about magic of the cup, we had 120 minutes of unbelievable football on display. We had goals, penalties, wet weather football, we had it all. It's been an unbelievable experience being here at Oakley Cannons, experiencing the Greek culture and experiencing football culture at its finest. It's been an awesome time. I'm Costa and I've been cup tied here with Oakley Cannons. And a big thanks to Costa there. And if you are listening to the pod on Spotify or wherever you're listening to your podcast, make sure to jump on Australia Cup socials. Watch the full thing because awesome fans down there at Oakley and great Greek culture there as well. We'd love to see them cause another upset in the semifinal. Going to be a touch harder though against this MacArthur side. Let's talk about the draw. Jonah, as a, as a neutral here, it's Sydney United taking on Brisbane and Oakley taking on MacArthur. Would you have loved to see the MPL teams go against each other? or 100%, yeah, yeah. just to get an MPL team in the final. It'd but be huge. It never happened. Surely it was a fix, no? <laughs> <laughs> you, you think so? You don't like that? I mean, look, in, in on one way, we get to see two suburban grounds. I'm happy about it because at least we get to go to Adenza yep. and we get to go to Oakley for that game. So it's like we don't, you know, get really get the suburban grounds. Two opportunities at an upset again. I don't know, but I know what you mean. It would yeah, be nice. It would be great. Team. Who's to say they can't upset again? I know, I know. I'm not, I'm not ruling them out. You know, just, He's just not, saying. Not you're not confident in us. You should uh, be confident. <laughs> if it's at your place, I fancy you every day of the week. I, I remember, <laughs> I remember playing there for a call where it was 
I call it the Anfield of MPL one. It yeah. is horrible. <laughs> it is, it is, is that as in tough to play on the like, surface or, or the, the fans? Both. Right. I, I, they've had the new pitch then. Yeah, right? new pitch. Now, I remember yeah. the pitch wasn't the greatest yeah. there, and the, the but the fans are so passionate because yeah. I know that first time because I was on all the set pieces. So whenever <laughs> whenever there was a corner, <laughs> whenever there was a corner on that side, I was like, oh no, here we go. But <laughs> it, it it we were saying off air, it does affect you as it, and you can kind of like go into a zone where you just. You're not concentrating. You're you're not there, mm. and um, it does play a, a big part. But it doesn't help when um, Glenn Trafiro's running the show yeah. back when I was playing. So, yeah, yeah. but it's a tough, tough, tough place to go. And I think you've, you guys have got to use that to your advantage. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. No, no, our crowd are they're loud for ninety minutes straight, or even less than one hundred and twenty minutes. They yeah. don't stop. Yeah. You know, right. and it does. It gives us that edge, and and you know whether it affects them a little bit. Yeah. You know. But yeah, no, it should be good. It's it so should, should be good turnout on uh, and Sunday. And what I love is you said what, when you were up there, you had even the Gold Coast Knights fans come down. Now, if you do make the final, you were saying it is a creation championship on that weekend where all clubs will be in Sydney for that weekend, Yeah, right? so there's a, there's a Crow tourney that happens every year and it's literally on the weekend of the final. So if we do uh, get to the final, then um, literally every creation in Australia will be in Sydney. So <laughs> <laughs> that could be oh, carnage. <laughs> <laughs> It's going to be huge. Um, you'd hate to be a shot of Rakia on that weekend, mate. It'd be going down like water. It'd be good to see. Give us the preview. I mean, there's no one better to ask. Sydney United taking on Brisbane. We know a lot about Brisbane because, you know, the A-League clubs, I guess, get all the limelight. We know about Charlie Austin. We know about Millie Usnich, all the great players there and, and the quality, the job they're doing there. Tell us about Sydney United, though. Danger men, main danger men to watch in this game. Yeah, ultimately, like, you know, we've got Patrick and Paney up front. They've been really good for us. Um, even Kyle, you know, Patrick and Paney have been injured. Kyle have come in and he's, he's worked well and done mm -hmm. well. Um, all the boys, to be honest, everyone gives 100%. Mm. Everyone, you know, we're like a family. Like, yeah. we all play for each other, and everyone's showing quality. Um, of course, you've got Glenn, who, yeah, he's the GOAT. <laughs> so <laughs> Still pulling the strings. Still pulling the strings. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's unbelievable. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, no, nah, everyone, honestly, everyone's just ready to go, and Brilliant. we'll give it our all. Brilliant. Is there a difference? You, you beat Western United, then you had to play an NPL side. Is there a difference in the team talk or the preparation when you are playing an A-League team, or do you take every game the same? No, nah, every game the same. Right. We just... Uh, we go when we go in confidence, like we know we we can we can beat them, and yeah. and that's it. Yeah, and Jonah, what do you think for these A League players having to go play on a synthetic pitch? Do you think that makes a difference for these guys? Obviously, no synthetic pitches in the A League. When you have to go, you mentioned the crowd are tough, but also to play on those pitches that you aren't used to, will that make a difference for these players? Hundred percent. All the pressures on them, you know. Yeah. All the pressures on them to deliver. I I prefer playing on synthetic. Not great for the body that they have to. Yeah, yeah. I think that's why maybe the, a lot of the pros complain because it's yeah. not not the greatest yeah. on the joints. But I love playing on synthetic. There's right. no excuses. You know, the yeah. ball rolls lovely. Yeah. yeah. There's no excuses. Don't get me wrong. Much prefer a, a, a nice, lovely grass pitch. But yeah, that's what these pros are used to. So it is does take a bit of adapting for it's, them. It's a big difference because even playing in Brisbane against yeah. uh, uh, in the Brisbane team, we are. Uh, Playing on real grass, yeah. it, it felt weird. Yeah, mm. honestly, I, I was heavier, a bit like, yeah, heavier. heavier yeah. Like the way I was moving my feet, just a little bit. Even kicking was really. I'm so used to the synthetic Getting now that synthetic. when I was kicking on the real grass and the moving and stuff, it was whoa. Yeah, weird. right. Well, yeah. hopefully it's the other way now for Brisbane Raw visiting. That's going to be a cracking game. That's on this Sunday, the 11th of September. Make sure you're watching that one on 10 Play, or by all means, if you're living in Sydney, get down to that game. The atmosphere will be electric, and the Chavapi second to none, huh? Chavap is always good. Second to none. <laughs> at Adenza Park, I can say, from personal experience, brilliant down at Adenza. The canteen's always flying there. And then on Wednesday, the 14th, we've got Oakley Cannons at home. If you want a Suvlaki roll, one of the best Suvlakis in Melbourne, head down there. The boys tried it when they were shooting Cup Tide. They take on MacArthur FC. In my opinion, probably one of the hottest teams going forward in the country. They've got all those superstars. A lot of players now have returned from Europe, like Daniel Lazani, and now have that second chance there. Chris Lucas is set to make his 13th appearance in this competition, which is the third most of any non-A-League player. So big credit to him from the Oakley Cannons. Joe Guest as well is one off the golden boot. So he was pivotal in their win against Sydney FC. If he can score one, he could potentially be pushing for the golden boot. You know, your teammate, Paddy Antelmi, yep. only player to win the golden boot in this competition, not for an A-League team. Yeah. Oh, wow. So he's he's got to be. Is he is he going to be? I know he had a bit of an injury. Is he going to be back? Yeah, he should be back. Yeah, a lot of the boys should be back, yeah, so, which is good. We got some numbers Full back. Strength. So it's good to see. Um, and you'll need your your center. You need Skip doing a job on uh Skip, oh, on yeah. Big Charlie Austin. That's it. That's it. Them two are fun together. I honestly watch them. They, that'll yeah. be funniest. That's going to be interesting. Isn't <laughs> it? Um, and Lockie Rose, of course, is amongst it as well for Macarthur. He's got three goals to his name as well. Jonah, we'll leave that game. Because we know we're, we're, we're quietly backing Daniel and the boys to go through there. We'd love to see it. What's your dream final? 
the two NPR clubs for sure. Yeah, just, Sydney, yeah spice Sydney United, it up. Oakley. Spice it up. Yeah, but I would love to see a huge club like Sydney United get there with the yeah. fan base. It just shows, you know, the, the NPR one teams are huge. Yeah, they're huge and and they deserve a chance. You know, they do. Um, so I'm back in Sydney United. I mean, I think for you, th- you got to take it one game at a time. Hundred percent. For me, looking at it, I, I won't lie to you. I think my dream final is Sydney United Macarthur. Yeah, I would love to see it. Pull oh, that in it. <laughs> you know what? I'll pause that. Why? Why? It'd be great to see <laughs> them against right next Sydney, Sydney United get through and play MacArthur because I think the, the two Sydney teams, that'd be huge to see, I guess, the most glitz and glam team in the A-League at the moment with Dwight York as the gaffer. So many superstars take on Sydney United. And I dare I say that would pack a stadium out in the final. But yeah. either way, it'd be huge. Oakley Cannons do not rule them out because they've been ruled out before and they tend to prove everyone wrong. They've, Great been, they've been very good. They've they, been very good. They've been very yeah. good. Um, would love to see it. Would love to see an all MPL final as well. A bit of question time before I let you guys go. go I've got some questions for you that I think our fans will want to know. Joan, I'm going to kick it off with you. Who's the best Australian player you've worked with since you've been here coaching with Jonah Football? That's a good question. Just someone that had tech beyond belief. Tech beyond belief. Yeah, who was the... Because, you know, I've seen a lot of your clips. It's it's highly technical, your training. Who just wowed you and you thought, mate... Austra- is that male or female? Doesn't matter. Alana Kennedy. Really? Yeah, honestly, she'd give a lot of the men run for their money with yeah. her technique. Yeah. Unbelievable. We were doing a session just before she went back to the Women's Premier League, actually, where I had to spray a ball like 40, 50 yards. And it had like a lot of young W League players in the session as yeah. well. Yeah. And they were all doing their demos and Alana, first one, out of her feet and just went zing. And then all like the younger players were like, wow, that, like, that's, that's a standard. That's a level if yeah. I want to try and get, you know, obviously she's playing for Manchester City. Yeah. Um, incredible technique, to no. be fair. Incredible technique. Seems like a proper professional as well. I've seen the video you put up with her where she volleys one top bins at down at Ultra Football. Yeah. So I've seen that video as well. She's, Joke. Yeah. An old bicycle kick. She threw a bicycle kick really? in there. She's, she's got it all, to be fair. Wow. Okay. Non-Australian though would be Lafondra. Okay. He had some serious like watching him live in front of goal was yeah. like wow. It was that was insane. Proper bags man. Knows where yeah. the back of the net is. You've got to work with so many great players. Danny, my question for you. Who's the best striker you've faced at shooting practice at training in your whole career? Um Danny Ings. Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Yeah. He he you can never read him. Yeah, he's always. You think he's going near post? He's got far post, far post. Thing near, it was just yeah. You can never read him. Was, was that at Burnley? Or that was at Burnley. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. He can finish. To be fair. Yeah. Yes. And then free kicks, free kicks. Kieran Trippier. Right. Oh, yeah. That guy wobbles it, man. Really. What about his one? Um, lately, it was yeah. against City. Yeah. yeah, in the Premier. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely scary. He's that scary. One. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Brilliant. Yeah. You've you faced some strikers. That's yeah. the Danny Ings <laughs> and Kieran Trippier. Not bad at all. Jonah, question for you. If you could make a comeback, let's say you could just click your fingers, right? <laughs> if you could click your fingers, the body's fit, the tech is there, you could make a comeback and sign for one A-League club, who would it be? Do you know what? I'd, I'd say Western City Wanderers. Right. I know that's crazy, but I just, I, I, I the facilities they have there, okay. like going every day to train at mm. those facilities would remind me again of what it's like to be a pro. You know? Right, right. Unbelievable facilities. And I, I go back to what I said at the start, if you're in a good environment, mm. it's football's the best job in the world. You yeah, know? brilliant. Do you have an A-League team or are you pretty neutral when it comes to that? Pretty neutral, yeah, to be fair, yeah. just because... Well, coach, you're working with all of them. So not yeah. not <laughs> loads. Yeah, it, it is quite difficult sometimes to work with the A-League, A-league players right. um, just because it's very short. Mm. Um, but yeah, I don't really have a preference in the yeah, A-League. Yeah, Stick to Liverpool, that's it, you know. Yeah, <laughs> Liverpool diehard. Do not, <laughs> just, if, if you are following Jonah on any form of social media, mute the stories because it's just, he's an absolute tragic when it comes to Liverpool. Uh, last question for you, Daniel. I mean, this is pretty simple. Who would you love to face in the final? Anyone? Nah, I don't know. Who would you um, love to face? I think or, or MPL final. Yeah, that'd be that'd great. Be, that'd be it? cool, man. Yeah. That'd be um, yeah, the atmosphere, the crowd, and yeah. just the knowing that you know there's an MPL team that's going to go into because what is it? Is it AFC Cup? Maybe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can yeah. go play continental football yeah. from the MPL level. Wow, really? Can so you yeah. imagine that's that? Insane. Yeah, could be up to Japan or something. It'd be amazing. Break. Wouldn't it? yeah, <laughs> it'd be amazing. <laughs> Surely the boys would go mad over there. Good, oh, good bunch man. of boys on a night out too. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Everyone, yeah. That's that's where the NPR. Oh, that's why I think the NPR has got the A League covered. To be fair, hundred percent. Then you're the NPR on a night out. That's the where the podcast ends. Yeah. You know. 
<laughs> and feel a dangerous <laughs> night out. We've all experienced it. Uh, massive guys. Let's have a recap of those fixtures for those of you watching the pod at the moment. There they are, the two games. Sydney United take on Brisbane Raw and Oakley Cannons take on MacArthur. The best part about these games, suburban grounds. I think we all love it as football fans. Get down to your local ground. Watch these games because the atmosphere just hits different when you're not in a huge bougie yeah. stadium, you know, and you really are there and feeling it so close to the pitch. Thanks so much for all of you guys joining us and before I do let you two go, Jonah, I know it's busy time. Big congratulations, mate. Dad, oh. once again, second child. Congrats. Happy Father's Thanks, Day mate. for the other day. Yeah, it was class. Must Thank be, you. You must be a busy man at the moment. Yeah, time is, is limited at the minute, yeah. but it's the best thing ever, you know. Yeah. Thank you very much, mate. Appreciate it. Uh, no worries. And best of luck with all those camps that are coming up. Danny, for you, you're also getting into coaching as well as everything else. Yeah, so um, me and um, Vedran Yanyarovic, yeah. who recently just retired, he, uh, we're opening up a goalkeeping academy Brilliant. called uh, Last Line Goalkeeping. Awesome. So, um, yeah, we're looking forward to just in process setting that up. Yeah, yeah. we're forward to getting started on it. That's awesome. Keep an eye out for that one. And when you do have some goalkeepers that you're developing, can you send them over to Jonah? Because I, I don't know if you've seen some of his videos. I mean, <laughs> no. the technique's not bad, but the goalkeeping is questionable, mate. Hey, like, Wilson, <laughs> who's listening, he's a good keeper. <laughs> <laughs> some of them, I swear, they go straight through. I mean, it makes you look good, so I, I respect okay, it. If, 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 if Wilson needs some coaching. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Send him over. Stick Danny maybe, in goals. Maybe me and you little head to head. You know? <laughs> you know what? Stick Danny in goals, and then we'll see how the tech goes. Jonah football versus last line goal goalkeeping. Keeping. Let's, let's do it. Let's I do reckon it. you swallow half of his arm. Easy, <laughs> quiet, <laughs> easy <quiet>. dubs. <laughs> but anyways, uh, make sure you check these two out on all their socials. And of course, support Danny in the semi-final. We'll all have a bit of a soft spot for Sydney United after this episode going into it. There should be cracking games. Guys, thanks so much for joining us again here on the Magic of the Cup. We'll see you for one more episode before the grand final. See you next time.